Hello and welcome to another gameplay review on the Vakayu Gameplay Channel and in this one we have the great Dr. Mundo with a bit of a mini rework to make him more viable and easier to use in the jungle. Now as most of you know I played Dr. Mundo, that was my main jungler last season, I found something niche, hidden, not too popular, actually really unpopular, 0.5% pick rate in the jungle last season, but a decent enough viability that I could use him to climb and have some fun. Now. I'm not a fan of all these changes necessarily, we will go through them as they show up, but essentially they have tried to make him better late game, and in doing so, have opened up some possibilities for blood paths and runes that weren't quite there before. Now, runes on your screen now. We have here the fleet footwork with the bloodline. No. Keep yourself tenacity, keep yourself alacrity if you wish, the rest obviously just go the same as always. The big change here is though, do you go Heart Steel or do you go Radiant Virtue? We're gonna focus on a Heart Steel game because that is by far the better itemization. With my Zarda GG guys, I've actually updated, as you can see the vision here from the Gragas' team, I've upgraded everything. Mundo, every jungle that I have a guide for, fresh Season 13 roots, items, runes, builds, everything you need to know, all linked below. But for Dr. Mundo now, the biggest shift I think that you feel in the jungle is that shift on the E. Instead of having missing HP be the activator, it is max HP. How? innovative and original just to slap max HP on a tank. I hate it, I think it's stupid, I prefer the skill based use of the previous E, however it does allow us a bit more flexibility in terms of the other you know abilities in his kit and how we can sort of buff and nurture this champion into a bit more of a viable jungle role. Now that being said there is a greater health cost on that W, there's a greater health cost on that Q. The W though instead of being something over four seconds that you use for sustained damage tanking which I think was a very nice skill to have, they have decreased the amount of time it's active from 4 seconds to 3 seconds and instead of being a sustained replenishment or absorption for grey health the grey health will give you back a huge influx in the first 0.75 seconds you press it and then thereafter drop to 25% for the remaining time period. This means it's significantly better for um, those initial burst procs, right, against Rengars and other things. It might unload a lot of damage initially. You can press that W, you'll get that, you know, 80 to 95% gray health stacking, and then of course it drops off to 25. Now, what's sucky about this is that it changes the nature of how you tank damage in fights, but in doing so, they've allowed the R to effectively give you way more HP healing based upon the straight up numbers. I mean, look here, we have the R here, can you see that? Right, 15% of his max HP, That now that goes up to 25. So that's a huge increase from 8 to 15, it's now 15 to 25. And we did lose the bonus, you know, AD steroid, which I don't like either, but I understand why. So with those changes in context, and obviously the reduction of healing on his passive, how can we sort of amplify these strengths uh, that he used to have in the early game? Here, in this case, we've done a full clear base, taking the opposite scrap, which I think, this is huge. This is what you're looking to do on Mundo. Can I full clear and take this crab and gank? Or can I take full clear, gank these lanes and then take a crab? Maybe double scuttle should it, you know, be possible. Yeah, but if you really think, okay, enemy jungle is coming down, lanes are doomed, lanes are whatever, I can't get in there, it just doesn't look great, focus on your farming. Your max HP now, even though the damage kept to monsters is gone down, on that E means you can just straight up use it. <laughs> you don't have to think about low HP, you just press it, you get the max HP stacking. We still have the passive, thank goodness. We still have the HP conversion into AD, which is lovely, and that means because this whole kit really scales with HP, before in season um, 12, for example, you know, it was always a thing where like, I need bombies, I need Sunfire, I need to then kind of... Um, build that first and then build into other itemization. Now you can just rush a Warmog's pseudo item in the heart steel instead of the straight up Warmog's and it's huge, 800 HP and all your scalings, this is juicy. But I do recommend getting that Bami still early because as you can see here, this is where we lose a bit of that power early, but we gain a lot late. So we're gonna have to be a bit more intelligent about our fightings and our fistings, but he's still great. He's still great. You're not gonna notice too much of a difference in that regard. It's just a little bit different in terms of how you use the W, how you use the E, and the Q is much more costly when you miss a target. So do keep that in mind. Do pick up your passive still, even though the healing is reduced. Uh, let me check a cleaver over the wall. There we go. Full clear, look, observe, nothing, okay, back, take the opposite scuttle, always great, especially if the jungle's coming down here and you can't contest, and then resequence again. Should there be a gank top lane like this one? Say we were here, yeah, we would gank this. But otherwise, the focus is on your own econ, your high econ farming scaling tank. You will have low KP early, but you're looking for at least 7 to 8 CS per minute minimum. Now, we have the Yasuo Rakan here. Ah, it's Macro, the Orn God. So there you go, this is the Orn God doing Orn things. We do love him around here. Obviously, I'm a jungle Orn player and he's a normal human being who plays it on the top lane. Yeah, you see, I like weird things. 
in the jungle. Hmm. Right, we end up shadowing this bottom lane here to see maybe there's something we can do, and that's because there's still a huge amount of downtime. There we go, using the hook uh, emote to say bait, bait, bait for a good reason. But the Gragas is trying to do the same thing. Wundana runs in here. Here you go, using the W. Remember, you do get. Oh, that cleaver missing really sucks because we would have killed her. Yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah, we got it. We got it. We got it. Okay, so if you miss a cleaver there and she gets away, that's why. So it, there's a reason we have Mundo Dodgeball, right? It's it's a skill based. Fun game to, to test your mechanics with dodging and skill shot accuracy. It's not as easy to permanently hit those cleavers as people think until you stop playing Munda, but obviously the better you are, the more reliable you will be. So excellent use of, hey, I'm farming and going down. Grog is saying, hey, I'm farming and going down. Let's meet together in the bot lane, merge our jungling together, and then um, battle it out like uh, the 1500s. Munda obviously wins that even in his vacation gear. You can straight up rush hard steel. I do think it's absolutely fine to go bombies first to amp up your, your, your farming. But in season 12, what I would love to do is go bombies, giants, bombies, giants, or giants. If I was really fit early in a first rotation, I take the giants and then bombies later because the giants belt is 350 HP of lovely goodness that you can use on all of your spells. Now, level six is the giga rush we want. The RNG crab is blessed on the top side here. Macro is in the top line here. Camille, don't go near the. Okay. Uh, for a second there, I was like, are you... No, uh, she's playing with fire a little bit. Um, good gank. I mean, we altered there. You see, this is what I'm saying. Like, this would have been better previously. But now we don't get bonus... We don't get bonus AD from this. So using it to do more damage is... Like, it, it, you don't do more damage. You just go faster. You just get more healing. It, there's no reason to use it unless you 100% have to in a fight. So... Before, you would just press the steroid rage button and go <laughs> Hulk out, and then you'd run people down. And they'd be like, Mundo's OP, Mundo's OP, and then you know who they really are. But in this case, you didn't need to use it. You're not getting more damage. And obviously, the more, you know, HP you have here, the more um, attack damage we get too. So that's why this is always so good. Right, uh, let's have a look. We could fall back to this, but the fact that the Graga shows here means dude's going to fall back to this stuff. So we can basically try and do a little loop path here, right? We could do the Gromp, the Wolves, and then look for the objective, which is what I would typically do on Mundo here, um, as he most likely either does it himself and we meet and I just beat him 1v1, or he keeps going and so I can get that, that objective uh, kick on him, use a top lane if that's a snowballing lane, or just drive down and contest this and then fall back to the red side. Do you follow? Good. Rewatch it if you don't. But that's the advanced jungle pathing that Mundo does allow junglers to use, and that's why I love playing him. You got so much variety in terms of what you can possibly do on the map here, and obviously using your E and the missing HP of the babies as they will golden ball ricochet with the low HP damage. Yeah. Oh well. Anyway, we are now doing the red into the Krugs. Yeah, you can see I'm, I've played it. I've it's fine. It's still great and fun, and I just liked the uh, there was so much skill expression in Mundo Jungle. Uh, before this little mini rework, but he is now effectively an S tier pick in terms of hey, if you like playing tanks, you can solo carry with this without a doubt. Um, it's one of those jungle picks that allows you to do so. As you see, we're two zero one here. Now our bot lane is a Yasuo Rakan. He's gone back to base. It is Hillisang actually, but the problem is there's no point hanging around. And what I love about the way he's playing Mundo here is that he is not hesitating at all to say. I cannot contest this, I'm not wasting time. I'm gonna go back to base and just take something else somewhere else. As a jungling principle, I want anyone who plays any sort of farming scaling jungler to please take heed of this power thing. Even first rotation, I can't contest the bottom scuttle, I can't gank it, I'm out. Let me go top lane again while you do the dragon or you know do whatever you might be doing. Go top lane again because macro is just destroying. Please, I hate that. Again, we don't need to ult here, like just use your ghost, man. What, why are you using? Hand pet big dog. You're annoying me now with this ultimate usage. It's silly. You don't need to use Just use your bloody ghost. Use your ghost and get the smite down, and then you can hit your cleaver for the assist, at the very least, right? But hey, it is what it is. At least we gank. We got the proximity assist. Hard steel is completed. We can begin stacking this. 252. Yes, 252 is going to be really, really nice. Passive is ignited. Make sure you pick this up just in case someone shows up like a Gragas. Uh, 23 seconds now. So that is huge for CC comms. That's why it's so nice. When you've got Orns and Gragas's or Gragai and other sort of CC heavy Sashwanis and things like this, having that passive is always good. But you see, this is what we're looking for here. We're gonna go ahead and reset, make sure we get this here. Gragas shows up. Now our passive is available in five, four, three, two, 
one. So if he did want to contest, right? You just play around that. The CC he uses doesn't do anything. The Camille has decided to disappear. <laughs> Fuck this lane, I'm out. My jungler ganked my lane, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, when top lane is a horrible man. Whenever you gank their lane or they just lose solo anyway, you're like... Jean-Luc Picard memes, right? Is what it is. Hey, but I'll take the free experience, you know? Like, as the jungler farming jungle, 111... Like, she got 54 CS. Macro, what are you doing to the guy? He has a family. Well, apparently not, because with 54 CS, no one could love it. Oh, my goodness. Azir shows up, so we can't actually hold that, and we see the trip. I am incensed. I'm absolutely incensed. That is rage triggering. I hate it when mid laners take my raptors. Now, take your own jungler's raptors like all other degenerate mid laners do and leave mine alone. Honestly, any, I see, I have this thing where if we get sig significantly reduced experience against minions, I know that we get the bonus experience as we shove in the bottom lane up two levels. Here, macro, stop it, man. And, um, you know, like, what are we, 114 to 88 here? That's 4,000 to 5,600. If you're looking at a 12 minute positioning from Mundo Jungle, this is effectively where you'd want to be. And yes, you might be 201 and your team has 10 kills. You might be 201 and your team has 3 kills or 6 kills. It doesn't really matter. You are still looking to be at this point, right? Powerful, strong, herald, and contesting a dragon. Now we want to use it to try and elevate the game state pre 14. Problem is, our herald doesn't do nearly as much damage. So the Mundo Jungle power spike here in previous seasons, or at least in 12, was. This would probably be something that you could kill with the Herald if it was like at four plates already. And we could go ahead and bust this out, push it up, and now you start to move around the map, get in their jungle, and no one can fight you, especially when you have, you know, Sunfire as as well as um, the Warmogs. That was a secret tech. You could go Titanic, Warmog second after Sunfire, just to get HP for your damage scalings, and obviously you were unkillable. The resistances didn't matter because no one could kill you. Now we have so much more healing as well, plus a heart steal. I'm not a f I do like the Swifties. We don't talk enough about the Swifties, but I really do love the Swifties um, on Mundo, actually, especially against a lot of slows, which they have. They do have CC, but remember, knockups do not get reduced by um, tenacity. So the Orn, the Gragas, the Nami, those knockups are going to do nothing, but the slows that they have will be affected by tenacity. But why do that then? You might as well just go straight up. <laughs> yes! Uh, it absorbed. Uh, yes, uh, I love it when they use spells. If you are ever against a Varus, <laughs> if you're ever against a Varus, um, and you're worried about that champion, press Ghost, press R, and run at him. Just hard as hell, like, but every, and chuck a cleaver. Dude's gonna freak out and ult you. Well, it happens every time, and then you just laugh because you're passive, and then he's got nothing, so he dies. It's really, really fun to actually do that. So, um, good use of uh, the passive there. I mean, not that you have to do anything, it just exists. Um, again, this would normally be down now, but the increased resistances mean it's much harder to, to kill. I'm gonna just straight up lane gank here. Really, really good use of the lane gank. Just saying, look, I, it's too long for me to go around. Um, <laughs> I'm just gonna run. You wanted to demolish proc. Um, I, instead of going around here, I'm just gonna lane gank, counter gank. And even though she dies, it's, it's fine. Uh, Macro absolutely fisting. Macro absolutely fisting the Camille. Lovely to see. I'm getting a treat both sides here. So are you, actually. Um, we could look to hit this. We do have a lot of damage for tow towers. Again, he's trying this Trindamir. Azir's just piss chilling in the mid lane. This is Mundo Gaming, pretty much, through and through. The Winged Moonplate into your dead man's. What do we think about that? I think it's definitely something you could go. I feel like if you're in a low to mid elo. Okay, so Diamond 1 and below, uh, just below Master Tier, you can very easily just go straight into the Mogs, Wool Mogs here, or Anathemus Chain. Against a Trindamir, I think if he's fed, then the Anathemus Chain could be super good for you. Super, super good for those fights. If you have a Lucian or a top laner who's an actual carry top laner who does a lot of damage, then that Anathemus chain can do a lot of work. Gives you bonus damage, gives you teamfight control. Something that I like to kind of float with. And if you just want to keep clearing and you want to be able to hit towers a bit more and do those objectives, you can still go the Titanic secondary. I am more of the Warmogs, Anathemas, um, you know, Randuins as necessary, Thormail. Um, rather than a dead man's, but the dead man does provide a certain fun and speed and damage and also giving you that armor and um, maneuverability around fights when you have swiftiness plus your ult plus ghost plus dead man's, right? So, and force of nature, which you add in as well, but obviously spirit visage is super good. So you really have all the choices and I've put all the builds in my Zarga, it's like the different parts you can go and why. Uh, it just depends on your philosophy. 
in terms of like how do you want to tank how do you want to carry what team come here against um there you go go and smack that baby with the e remember just e things max hp now and obviously we're getting the bonus uh 122 damage the problem was when the first um the first the season first dropped and i went on pve obviously we would do more we would get more hp the lower hp we we were right in the jungle and we would get quite low in the jungle we're gonna smite here and just make sure he dies like that he's fine see there we go we're not using the ulti now we could go ahead and wait tank a little bit then we could use our i'll pick up our canister very very good use your e hit your uh cleavers permanently keep auto attacking and then obviously don't forget that this does damage too huh this does damage and the detonation also does damage the big change is that when you use it and you don't actually get any damage to absorb you get 50 percent of the health fund back Whereas before you got you, you got zero, so with the increased health cost, you do get some back if you use it preemptively, and the enemy team kites it out, and you don't get any sort of a gray health. You still at least get some of that HP back. So that's in exchange for the increased cost, uh, which is you know it is nice. I mean, but five percent up to eight percent, it is noticeable for most good mundos. So now we're <laughs> we're just thriving on the stacks here. Three thirty five for this one. Here you can go. You could honestly just go straight into war as well. So you could go an HP orientated build. Um, again, I do recommend here the Sunfire instead of the Deadman's as a default. I feel like a lot of you won't be sort of clearing as efficiently as a high elo jungle, obviously, right? But you still want to be in a position to fire, farm, and rotate. And in elos where shit goes down in a bad way, which it has in this one, you know, like we were in a gold deficit, you want to be able to rotate quickly. So the Deadman's, the Ghost, that all helps, but also it helps as you being able to clear your camps faster and sequence quicker so the downtime is larger for you to rotate and make those plays you follow good so sunfire is is one you can go as well but this is one of the builds that you can go that you can have fun with uh just remember the boots always flex as necessary we could look to cut for some counter jungling here but we don't because they're pushed up and we most likely anticipate some sort of a uh, movement as we can see here for oh we've got the timers up underneath the scoreboard we anticipate some sort of movement to the dragon but this is a juicy dragon Dragon control should be free. Herald and dragon control should be something you don't have to think about whatsoever. Always on loop, positioning, because your 1v1 is so strong now. I mean, it was strong anyway, but your 1v1 is even stronger now because the items suit you. The versatility for itemization is there. And of course, now we have max HP on the E, so you're less worried about like, um, you know, that, that, missing H that missing HP as it were. Um, I don't like that we lost the passive on the missing HP. Oh, and my story, right. So, <laughs> the, the, the patch came and all the pets were there and I was full clearing in the jungle and PB is like, but I want to be low HP. Stop making me so healthy, Riot. And you were full HP losing the effectiveness on your E. So that's why, it's also one of the reasons why they changed it. So you're losing a lot of the cool thing where you'd be like level two with 100 HD, with 100 AD, right? Nutty. So I, I'm not a fan of that kind of going away, but... Nah, it is what it is. Now we head to the bottom line here. We have the Graga stealing our stuff. I'll get back to the HP stuff in a second. We have the TB committed by the Birdman. He's showing every the Nami all goes through. Here we got some tanking. So we move into the middle here. Just stay in front of people, absorb CC. Make sure you're turning and peeling with your cleavers as necessary. And then kind of chase people down. We don't really get the full load here, but we can actually activate our ultimate. We can hold off. Now we press it. Make sure we get that passive as well. So it comes up again. Plus we get the healing. Very, very juicy. Reduced, but still good. Chase people down. Make sure you're hitting your E because again, max HP on that E passive AD. Now we're going to chase down that Graggy eyes and we keep chugging that W is a little bit not so good use except we actually end up hitting the cliff and getting to use it for the damage proc. Very juicy. And obviously this is down now. No many waves so tank it for your team. Bust it out and then fall back and steal some of his camp. So the thing is when you're missing when you have a spell that's based on missing HP it's better used when you're lower HP right. When it's max HP you don't care because it's as much as HP as you can have. So the more you have the more HP you have the more damage you do. Current HP also changes them because if you've got 5,000 current HP, right, and you take a percentage of that, that's this damage. And if you have way less because you've been chunked, the damage gets smaller. So all of these things factor into how you would use a spell. Um, and again, the bonus physical damage on that E activation is still bonus HP. So the HP you buy. So uh, you can't not buy HP and then be like, why do I do damage? I like that. I like that. I like the Yasuo dying because one, he deserves it, but I like hitting a cleaver over the wall. Um, the range is a little bit 
misleading sometimes. In the meantime, making sure that you are looking for these rotations and these fights, specifically when it's the gigantic tank. We have the charm go through from the Rakan, gets it on two targets, tries to respace, gets stunned. He will die. The Camille decides to ult the Lucian. The Mundo shows up, says, hello, it's Dr. Time, and it is. Now we want to use a W appropriately for the initial burst. We want to keep chasing down people. Pick up your passive to get it up as soon as possible. 16, it will be up immediately. So pick it up, get CC'd, pick it up, get CC'd, and you don't get CC'd. We get knocked about. We don't like it. We've lost the movement speed, and our ultimate is gone. We could have taken the Krugs, but we looked for people. We couldn't get it. We are now shifting to go onto the El Baron. A little bit more risky, considering everybody here is giga, giga low. And we don't have smite for 3, 2, 1. Orn comes in and is going to hit a nice ultimate, although it doesn't do anything here. Orn's passive gets procced again. The Baron is now killing everybody. Dry out, draw them out. I was going to say drag them out, draw them out. Use your W there for the giga healings. Very, very nicely done. Orn goes back in. We get the knock up on the Yasubi, who knocks up the Nami, forces the flash, will now have to reposition. TB is now committed by the Camille, whose scissor kicks into the Trinomir, gives a slicing. Dude has his ultimate, which means nobody's going to die. Mundo's over the wall, chucking cleavers as hard as he can. And um, that ends that particular chain of events. Cool. Right. Now, the problem with this is we're going to go back to base, and they're all going to go straight to the Baron and look to make that play, which is why I hate that call. And as a Mundo player in this particular situation, if your team does that, you can't help it. You know, if you if you got knocked over here and they started up, they get super low, that sucks. Ideally, you're the one there. Uh, without ult... Oh, excuse me, it is up. We're going to try... Oh, we actually are trying to get a smite here. Can we steal it? Oh, they're doing such a good job holding it. They're doing... Oh, that we could have... Oh, we still get a kill. We could have and almost stole that. And the red team did an excellent job just stopping attacking the Baron. That is... You're not going to see that in most of your games. If you're Gragas' team... They're not going to focus on Mundo, they're going to keep attacking it, and it's going to be a straight up 50-50. So they do get the Baron, which, you know, it was more of a risky Baron, but they do get it nonetheless. And if they all die from it, then it's not that great. However, in those cases, in solo queue, you're looking to make these plays. Valiant... Wait. Alright. Uh, dragon's going to be... This is a good dragon. Hextech dragons, um, ocean dragons, uh, chemtech dragons, uh, cloud dragons... Fire dragons. All dragons are good at Mundo, actually. That's quite funny. That's not always the case. But for us, it is the case. Now remember, Moss Stomper is by default the best thing to go. Mundo is going to be getting some slight nerfs and adjustments, as well as Moss Stomper. So this particular game does show you the peak of the power. But please understand that it will be shifted. However, it's still going to be super strong. Nothing that I said here is necessarily going to change. It's just a numbers adjustment. Um, you're going to play him exactly the same way as you see here. Although I can recommend for more knowing Mundo players, go for that Scorch Claw. Don't need the Master Stumper for Tenacity. You don't need um, the Shield. The damage, however, can be super rewarding and super fun. Also the Slow, right? You got the Slow, you got the Approach Velocity, you got the Q. That can be something that's quite good for you to use, without a doubt. Also worth noting here that when I did play those games without Sunfire, I really felt my damage in fights, right, wasn't as good. Here we have a lot of AD as well, so the Sunfire could have been super, super good. I think the Sunfire instead of the Dead Man into the Randuids would have been a perfect build path, and then you can justify sort of your Spirit Visage um, or anything else you want. Those are what I would say is probably the default. And if you want to go Radiant Virtue, you can. It does give you healing. It does give you HP passive on the Mythic, obviously, to everything, which is great for our scalings, as I said. But it's way more teamfight orientated and... This is more solo queue, carry 1v9 orientated, so. Do you recommend this? Do you recommend this? We'll look at one team fight once we're done with a Radiant Virtue. Okay, here we go. All in from the ore. Nunda now going for the back line, which is what you can do. Kill the person who does damage. Now chase down the Enchanter because they're little bitches and they stop people from dying. So we're going to do this and say, you can't kill me, I'm the Mundo. Now you can turn back into the tanks and help your team clean up. So what you're seeing here is a Mundo recognize that instead of peeling, he can just kill the back line and then peel afterwards. And that's really, really important to notice, Mundo, using his passive there to absorb the CC as well. And just keep, see, this is where the Sunfire is huge. Just keep doing this. Keep chaining together your ease whenever it's up. Because now, of course, as I said, it's not based on missing HP. Although you would, you would do that anyway. Cleavers, make sure you're hitting them, and then Ws. You can take a lot of towers, and this is funny. <laughs> He's got the best tower killing animation in the game. Yeah, it's because most of the time, that's what I want to do when I watch replays. <laughs> yeah. 
pretty much. So everyone's respawning. That's all that needs to be said on this one. I will click on the inhibitor, chuck a cleaver, and disengage. We are now at 4,337 HP. We have dealt 2,400 damage from the heart still gain 514. And obviously, we get increased health 2% plus 12% champion size. That's why I think it's better than Radiant Virtue. And that's also why it has a much higher win rate. Build Path is just like Warmogs, which is what you love. Really do. And I think if you've got the Sunfire here, you can get this up even further. And you do more damage in those fights. The only thing I will suggest is in that fight where we went for the back line, if they had the Camille and they were going on your ADC, and your ADC was really fed, try and peel her first and then chase down people afterwards. So you do have to know when to target swap. Um, Gragas, you don't win this, my guy. Again, pressing the ult. Oh, no, we don't actually have ult. Never mind. My bad. Don't press the ult in that situation. You don't, you're not getting really any HP anymore, and you don't get AD, so... I, 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 that sucks for me still. I like the Hulk out button. Hey, Yasuo, are you going to be useful? I mean, he's been okay. Cleaver, absorb, chase down, E smash. Cleaver, miss. Who's next? Orn. You can just chase him now. The movement speed's nice, obviously, so you can use it for the movement speed. Make sure you get that briefcase swipe, or in this case, the Yuki Lali swipe. Hit another cleaver. Keep chasing people down. There we go. Keep healing, healing, healing. Use your W for the initial uh, 0.75 seconds, and then press it again. You can reactivate it as necessary. So, nice game. Sorry the noise, the sound was a little bit loud from the game in the beginning. Usually I adjusted, but hopefully it didn't distract you too much. Nice win, an excellent carry. Good comeback. Macro did super gamings. But at the end of the day, this be tank life. Am I right? Let's look at the Radiant Virtue game. Okay, so in this game, we do have the must number as well. We're looking at a game that we have control over, but I just want to showcase the Radiant Virtue. There wasn't a lot of selection, actually, with the Radiant Virtue in terms of, like, behind games and things like that. I do think the solo carry is better, but they have a Hecarim Yumi. So all you need to know is that this game is straight up winnable no matter what. Now, at this point in time, we do have, so you know, 975 HP healing to allies and 752 healing on ourselves. And we're just gonna witness the closing moments of this game with team fights and see how that changes. So when you activate that ultimate, we're gonna get that burst proc as well. And we can obviously use that around our team here. Um, we used it a little late there, but obviously better use of the ult from a Mundo perspective, right? Wait till we get lower, we get that burst proc back. No bonus AD steroid. So there's no real reason to bust it out unless you wanna chase people down and you don't have your ghost up. But obviously ghost might is the way to go. And I mean, just from that one little section there, we went up 300 healing to self and went up 300 healing to allies. So that's nice, right? You do increase your max HP, which is great. It's, it scales on all your spells. That's the good thing. But the allies within a certain range will get that non-ultimate haste and that healing. So that's kind of what you're trying to go for. I do think... I like it in concept, really, but... The hard steel just for me is just so much better. Just so much better. And the resistances are not really as necessary with core itemization. And here we went for the Sunfire for faster farming. And obviously, we have the um, Spirit Visage coming up next. Bonk! That should be a dead person. We can keep track of this stuff over here. Um, but we need to become transcendent first and foremost. Ah, Yumi Hekum from the baseline. So here we turn to Peel. And that's where this transcendent is going to be absolutely huge to help our team heal up as well as ourselves to heal up. We want to try and deal with that Hecarim, but you see what we're doing. We just turn to Peel and then disrupt it. And now we can chase down because we're Munda. We have Ghost, we have Ult, we have Cleavers, we have Approach Velocity. They can do nothing when you actually make the right decision in team fighting. And um, now we have a Herald actually that we secured during downtime, for example. We went up another 500 healing to self, and we went up another 900 healing for allies just from that one fight. Just from that one fight, we became transcended, and that's what the peel does. So against the Hecarim, a Rengar, a Kha'Zix, you might find this actually just better. Now, if you're playing Clash and things like that and grouping up a lot, that's where this will come into its own. But for Solo Q, it is still down 3 4%, just so you know. We're going to go ahead and snack that dragon, uh, which is lovely and juicy, I think. Then we're going to go on to the bottom line here and see what the final numbers shall be. So we're at 1995. You can't see it, but again, match histories are always linked below. So you can check the numbers for yourself. No point in lying about that when I give the match histories. <laughs> and uh, now we're splitting the bot lane here with the Baron. We'll see what the numbers come out as. But I think you can see just in the few clips I've shown that 1500 HP healing to allies plus yourself is obviously going to be very, very good. So make sure you use your ultimate appropriately as well, not just solo backline diving. If you're solo backline diving and you want to be that assassino mundo, then do so. Here we go. Now we can press it, obviously, to activate and get the healing. We want to become transcended. We haven't done so yet because we don't need to, and that's also important. Don't waste it. If you don't need to, don't waste it. Use it afterwards when you do need to, and actually now we've pressed it, but um, that was for glory. So we do we get over 2,000? We Whoa. 
Upon casting your ultimate, transcend, increase your max HP. Yes. It went to 2,584, so we got 500, 600 extra healing just from this. Because, of course, they don't have to take damage, right? It's just you pressing the ultimate and they just get the healing. So the healing didn't really do anything there, but it pads your stats. So just a little bit of a difference in team fighting. If you need to peel a bit more and they've got a lot of assassins that might make it difficult for your team to survive, it can be better. But um, for solo queue, I do recommend Heart Steel by default. Hope you enjoyed it and learned something. Zada GG Guide has everything you need, including both these builds. And uh, thank you very much for watching. See you all in the next tutorial.